Lying on the center of the East Sea, Vietnam enjoyed great opportunities for trade expansion and social economic development on the one hand, but also faces big challenges in the course of national maritime sovereignty protection. <laughs> From 1834 to 1836, King Ming Mang sent such generals as Pham Phu Si, Pham Van Nguyen, and Pham Hiu Nhat to Huang Sa for measurement of each and every island, surveying, mapping, and installing steles and altars. King Thiệu Chi himself approved the Ministry of Public Works annual action plan of the Huang Sa flotilla. King Tự Đức bestowed the members of the Huang Sa flotillas who died in action the title of Heroic Soldier of Trường Sa. I am the descendant of the fifth generation of flotilla supervisor Phạm Hữu Nhất, a member of the Phạm Văn family in An Vinh Commune. Our ancestors used to reside in An Vinh, Tiên Kỳ, Quảng Ngãi province. Some ancestors in our Phạm family, such as Mr. Phạm Quang Anh, Phạm Văn Nguyên, Phạm Văn Sanh, Mr. Võ Văn Khiết and Đặng Văn Xiên in Tây Village An Vinh Commune, and some other helmsmen were dispatched to Hoàng Sa to measure sea routes and search for rare and precious sea products to pay tribute to the emperors. We are very grateful and proud that our ancestors had devoted great service in land claiming and defending our maritime border and national sovereignty at sea. Precious relics of Hoàng Sa Flotilla are now stored in washer places in Lisan Island such as Amling Pagoda, where the wandering soul of martyrs of Hoàng Sa and Trường Sa flotillas are worshipped and commemorated. Vestiges of Hoàng Sa flotilla in charge of Trường Sa are also found at the Vo family's ancestral altar. The tomb of Vo Van Khiet, the Dang family's altar, worshipping Dang Van Siêu, the altar and tomb of Captain Phạm Quang Anh, commander of Hoàng Sa flotilla, who was ordained as first great saint. Only luck could help the marines of Hoàng Sa and Trường Sa return home after harsh voyages under the court's order. Hence, families of those men conducted offering ceremonies before their departure. Just paper men on the paper boats were floated on the water to sort off all the bad lucks for the real ones. That ritual reflects the desire to survive to serve their motherlands more. Those heroic seamen of Huang Sa and Chiang Sa rarely returned, but their flesh and bones became one with the waters and waves, staying forever with this nation and being commemorated for endless generation of the country. All the land of Viet under this southern sky has gone through so much hardship. We remember those who died then, knowing that birth is just a short visit and death means a real return. But many sailed off and few return. They only lost their bodies and their souls ever live. It is so hurtful when they fell down for the fatherland, showing their great loyalty and the courage of man, daring to travel into the unknown, daring to withstand the rains and winds, taking the charge of protecting the boundaries at those far-off places, 
determined to keep the waters of Wangsa amidst the vast sea without knowing when to be back. The system of legal and historical materials linked to the many vestiges and cultural festivals relating to Huangsa and Chiangsa in Lisan Island, the graves of Huangsa flotillas men and their commemorative ceremonies are evidence of the Vietnamese aspirations and staff to conquest the East Sea and exercise sovereignty over the archipelagos of Huangsa and Chiangsa. Vietnam confirmed its sovereignty over those two archipelagos not only by historical documents but also by the maps drawn during these times, including the map of the Annam Empire, Annam Đại Quốc Hoa Đô, published in 1838, the complete map of the unified Đại Nam, drawn and printed at the same time under King Ming Mạng's order. Incorporating the names of all the territorial areas in the country and the areas of Huangsa and Chiangsa in Chinese scripts, the map collections was widely recognized and published in the West. The Vietnamese feudal state was aware of educating the young generation on protection of sovereignty over Huangsa and Chiangsa archipelagos. The children's textbook Khải Đồng Thuyết Ước, printed in the year of the snake of the Tự Đức Hira, 1881, has a map named the State Map, Bản Quốc Địa Đồ, putting Hoàng Sa under Vietnam's sovereignty. By exploring and exploiting the natural resources of Hoàng Sa and Chương Sa, the Nguyễn Lord and their royal courts later had gradually exercised de facto and de jure state managerial functions over the Huangsa and Chiangsa archipelagos. By exercising sovereignty here, the Vietnamese feudal state had gained the ownership of these territories when they were terra nullius, or not belonging to the territory or administrative system of any other country. The two archipelagos have become an inseparable part of the Vietnamese territory from unclaimed islands. Vietnam's sovereignty over the Hoang San Chiang Sa archipelagos were also confirmed through Western documents such as books, magazines, maps, diaries, maritime guidebooks, and missionary books. These texts represent the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos as a long stretch of sand off the central coast of Vietnam, similar to illustrations in ancient Vietnamese texts and maps of the same period. The Bulletin de l'École Française d'Extrême Orient, tome 36 in 1936, records the Batavia diary of the La Compagnie des Ains Lerlandaise et l'Indochine, India Holland Company in Indochina, about the East India Company's shipping incidents in the Huangsa Archipelagos, then known as Presso, in Cochinchina under the rule of Lord Nguyen Phuc Nguyen during the 1931-1936 period as follows. The party left on the 20th of July from the Bay of Touraine. The ships found themselves separated from each other on the 21st by storms. The Vin Huizan reached Fort Moses on August the 2nd and Shagan the 10th, but the Grotter Brook was wrecked near the island of Brussels at 17 degree latitude north. The first class merchant, John Sokmo, lost his life with eight crewmen cargo which amounted to 153,690 florin. He was lost with the ship for a value of 70,695 florins, with the rest safely and secretly stowed away on an island. Captain Huich Jansen, taken 12 men, embarked for and reached for the Annam coast. Captain Jansen made report on the sinking of the Grote Brook in the Parasols and the confiscation of 23,580 ro by the Cochin China authorities. Two years later, under the reign of the Lord Superior Nguyen Phuc Lan, 
1635-1648. On March the 6th, 1636, two other Dutch vessels reached Da Nang. Merchant Abraham Dujeka set forward to fight for Hoi An to meet the Governor General, then proceeded to Senua to meet the Lord Superior to ask for permission to trade, set up trading posts and requisitions of the 23,580 confiscated row two years later. To make up for their loss, the Lord Superior gave the Dutch the right to free trade in the country, exempted them from anchorage fees and the usual presents. For that reason, since 1836, a Dutch trading post was established in Hoi An, then known as Five Four, headed by Abraham Dujeka. Father Tartre wrote in a letter to his father superior in 1701, printed in the collection of interesting letters on Asia, Africa, and America, Volume Three, 1843 edition, provided some additional note about the geography and history of the parasol as follows. The ship weighed its anchor, enjoying favorable winds, and as such, reaching the west end of the parasols. Baraso is an archipelago belonging to the Annam Kingdom. It is a gigantic stretch of shoals running for hundreds of miles, where many ships wreck. It runs along the coast of Cochinchina or Dangchong in local vernacular. Another title published in London in 1806 by John Barrow, an envoy of the British mission in China, tells in. A voyage to Cochinchina in the years 1792-1793 of a trip to Vietnam in 1793, detailing the times of vessels used by the people of Cochinchina to travel to Hoang Sa Archipelago to collect swallow nests. Jean Baptiste Chenyo took the Vietnamese name of Nguyễn Văn Thắng, married a Vietnamese wife, and spent some time helping King Gia Long fight the Tây Sơn movement. Before leaving Vietnam for France, Chenyo was requested by the then French Foreign Minister, the Duke of Rochelle, to report on the situation in Vietnam. Notice sur la Cochinchine. Report on Cochinchina is the report on Vietnam during the beginning of the Nguyen Dynasty, written by Jean Baptiste Chenier in May 1820, before he left Vietnam for France after 25 years of serving King Gia Long. The report was printed in the Bulletin des Amis du Vieux Hue, Bulletin of Old Friends of Hue, in 1923. In his opening, Chenyo described the geography of Vietnam as follows: Co Chi Chinh, whose sovereign now bears the title of emperor, include Co Chi Chinh's proper Tong Kien, some habited islands not far from the coast and parasol, composed of islets, reefs, and uninhabited rocks. It was only in 1816 that the present emperor took possessions of this archipelago. The establishment of sovereignty of Vietnam over the Hoang Sa archipelagos by King Gia Long through a flag planting ceremony in 1816 was recorded by Monsignor Jean Louis Tabert, Vicar Apostolic of Co Chi Chinh, and King Gia Long's interpreter. In the Geography of Co Chi Chinh, published in 1837, as follows: The parasol or parasols is a labyrinth of small islands, rocks, and sandbanks, which appears to extend up to the 11 degree of north latitude. In the 107th parallel of longitude from Paris. Although this kind of archipelago presents nothing but rocks and great depths, which promises more inconveniences than advantages, King Zalong thought he had increased his dominions by this sorry addition. In 1816, he went with solemnities to plant his flag and take formal possession of these rocks, which it is not likely anybody will dispute with him. 
Also on King Zalong's occupation of the Huang Sai and Chiang Sai archipelagos, the war history and description of all the people's religions, customs, and practices. Japan, Indochina, Ceylon, by Dubois de Jansigny, published in 1850, page 555, records as follows. We will only observe that for over 34 years. The parasols appointed by the Annamese Katwang or Huangsa Yellowland, a real labyrinth of small islands of rocks and sandbars, just dreaded by navigators, was not occupied Cochin. We do not know if they have established a place, but it is certain that Emperor Salong wanted to add that strange jewel to his crown. Because he judged it expedient to take possession in person, and it was in the year 1816 that Solom bears the flag Cochin. The collection of duties by the Nguyen Dynasty from foreign vessel passing by the Huangsa Archipelago were recorded by Gustav in the Journal of the Geographical Society of London in 1849 as follows: We should not mention here the parasols. Katwang, which approach fifteen twenty leagues to the coast of Annam, and extend between fifteen degrees seventeen degrees north latitudes and one hundred and eleven degrees one hundred and thirteen east longitude, if the king of Kochi China did not claim these as his property and many eyes and reefs so dangerous to navigators, the Annam government. Perceiving the advantages which it might derive if a toll was raised, keep the revenue cutters and its small garrisons on the spot to collect the duty on all visitors and to ensure protection to its own fishermen. The Compendio di Geografia, Compendium of Geography, by Andriano Balbi, written in Italian. At page 548, in the 1854 edition by Livorno Publishing House, and page 643, in the 1864 edition by the Milano Publishing House, described the geography of the Annam Kingdom, Vietnam today. Belonging also to this empire is the archipelago of Paraso, the group of the pirates. And the group of Pulo Kondao, Kondao Island of today. Also in these books, the sections on Chinese geography do not make any mention of the Huangsa or Chiangsa archipelagos. In Tablo de la Cuchin, published in 1862, Eugène Cotonbert and Léon de Rosny placed the parasol or Katwang in the island groups belonging to Vietnam. The recognition of Huangsa and Chiangsa archipelagos as belonging to the Annam Kingdom is not only described in Western texts, but also drawn on advanced maps made from the 16th century by European countries and countries in the Americas. In one of his research, researcher M. G. Dumoutier talked about a 24-piece set of maps of Vietnam drawn at the end of the 15th century, of which the 19-piece clearly display a long sand strip, 500 to 600 nautical miles long, named by Cat Vang, Golden Sand, off the coast of Quang Ngai Province. In many ancient maps from the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries of missionaries, seafarers from Portugal, Spain, the Netherlands, the Huangsa and Chiangsa archipelagos have been depicted as a continuous strip in the shape of a bun sail off the coast of the central region of Vietnam, with many small dots representing islands, sandbanks with the words "Ile de Brasel." Brasel Archipelago. A particular note is Sinensis Oceanus East Sea Map of the Dutch Van Langren Brothers, printed in 1595, and the India Orientalis Map of East India by Mikato, printed in 1606 in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. In the area corresponding to today's coast of Da Nang is the word Costa de Brasel, meaning coast of Brasel. In 
Monsignor Taber published in his Latin Vietnamese dictionary, Dictionarium Anamitico Latinum, which was a very detailed translation of the Vietnamese language to Latin. The dictionary was attached with a map called Tabula Geographica Imperi Anamitici, the map of the Annam Empire, illustrating a section of the Huangsa Archipelago off the coast of Annam coastal islands, labeling them Parasols So Katvang. This particular map is proof of the deep and accurate understanding of Westerners of the relationship between the Huangsa Archipelago and the country of Đại Việt from 16 to the early 19th century, which Taber calls country of Great Annam. Paracel is the name given to the Golden Sand Island in the East Sea of Vietnam by Westerners, also known as Huang Sa, with the word "seo" in "seo paracel" on the map in Latin, meaning "meaning." While Huang Sa is Old Vietnamese for "gold sands," this map is proof that Westerners obviously confirm that Huang Sa belonged to Vietnam rather than belonging to China, which called the archipelago Sisha. Moreover, many German and Dutch archive centers currently house geographical books, dictionaries, maps, illustrating Huang Sa, Chiang Sa as a continuous strip in the shape of a darker hilt. Many of these recognize the two archipelagos as belonging to the Annam Kingdom. The Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte recently presented to Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng a copy of a map of Tonkin and Cochin China drawn in 1695. This is one of ten atlases currently preserved in the Netherlands, drawn by the East India Company during the 17th, 18th centuries, including descriptions of Huang Sa and Chiang Sa as belonging to the Kingdom of Annam. This once again reaffirmed that the world is always at the side of Vietnam and pays attention to the righteous struggle to regain sovereignty in these two archipelagos. Western documents relating to the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelago during the past two centuries is completely in keeping with the contents of recorded legal documents, history books, maps of Vietnam at the time. And are precious sources of reference to strengthen Vietnam's legal arguments for sovereignty over the two Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos. It should also be underlined that in this period, foreign texts do not mention the slightest notion of sovereignty or even claims by China to the two archipelagos. What should be noted here is that some Chinese documents even support Vietnam's sovereignty over the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos. For two centuries, Vietnam has conducted many activities within Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos. Annual six-month-long trips by the Huang Sa flotillas never met with any objection from China. Chinese geographical maps show Chinese territory ending at Hai Nam Island. Other documents even give proof of Chinese recognitions of Vietnamese sovereignty over the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa, such as overseas memoirs by Thich Tai San, the abbot of a Buddhist pagoda in in Quang Tung Province. The text is the memoir of his time in Thuận Quang region of the country of Đại Việt, Vietnam today, in 1695, before returning to China in 1697. The title of the text shows that this is a story about the author's trip to Đại Việt. The original manuscript was translated into Vietnamese in 1963 at Huế University. An excerpt from Volume Three, after talking about maritime issues and the role of wind, talks about the activities of Huang Sa flotillas formed by the Nguyễn Lord as follows. The previous king, he is the Nguyễn Lord, annually sent ships around sandbanks to collect gold, silver. In the fall, following the east wind, ships can travel hundreds of miles when there is a strong wind. In 1759, when vessels of the Huang Sa flotillas were washed ashore onto Hainan Islands, they were received by the Chinese authorities and provided the necessary equipment to return to Vietnam. Another Chinese text published in 1842 called Hai Luc, Sea Journey Records by Zhang Bing Nam, recorded first-hand experience of a Chinese sailor named Ta Thanh Cao, 
Road, Vạn lý Trường Sa is a stretch of land in the middle of the sea that is several thousand miles long. is a wall protecting Annam's or Annam's Hedge. To assess legal and historical documents proving Vietnam's sovereignty over the Hoang San Chiang Sa archipelago, we can consider sovereignty over the Parasol and Spratly Islands by Monique Chomelier Janco, published in March 1996. The book is a serious and independent scientific research project. Monique Chomelier Janto is a professor emeritus of public law and political science at the University of Paris 7, Denis Ditro, and is former president of the French Democratic Lawyers Association. In her book, Monique Chomelier Janto listed many historical and legal documents affirming Vietnam's sovereignty over the Hoang San Chiang Sa archipelago. We were fortunate enough to have the chance to meet and talk with the professor in Hanoi in the early days of 2011 while reenacting these historical events. Every time I came to Vietnam, I always found and regretted that the issue of Hoang San Chiang Sa, which I have studied for the past 13 years, have not been resolved. When I initially studied this matter under the international law perspective, I started with the historical entitlement of the claimant countries over these islands. I found out that Vietnam inherited the historical entitlement established since the 17th century, since from that time there had already been documents which I could not read directly as they were in either Vietnamese or Chinese. Later on, I read them in the French French translation. This document confirmed that from the 17th century to the 19th century AD, the Vietnamese kings had already confirmed Vietnam's sovereignty over the two archipelagos. What formed the legal foundation were that the Annamic kings not only stay as saying, this is our island, but also conducted managerial activities. This was indeed a component of the principle of international law from a terra nullius. In the case of these two archipelagos, there was one country that occupied these territories, that is, when this country exercised real action to control and manage these territories. From the document I've got in hand, I would certainly reiterate that as to a foreigner like myself, the study of this issue must be via translated documents. But from what is accessible to me today, I could see that the Anami kings had earned the historical entitlement over these two archipelagos. They had dispatched two seagoing companies to the two archipelagos in good seasons to conduct accurate instructions like planting trees or measuring the islands, etc. From these facts, I could be concluded that since those times, the Annamite kings had already enjoyed a good historical entitlement over the two archipelagos, which we found no other countries in the region could. Et ces compagnies avaient des ordres très précis, par exemple de planter des arbres, par exemple de, de faire le cadastre des îles, de le plan exact. Et on avait donc, et de ramener des richesses naturellement, et on a donc par là des éléments qui permettent de conclure que pour cette époque-là, il y a eu un titre juridique des empereurs du Vietnam qu'on ne trouve pas, on ne trouve pas l'équivalent pour les autres pays concurrents dans la région. At the recent second session of the 13th National Assembly of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam on November the 25th, 2011, the Prime Minister of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, Nguyen Tấn Dũng, affirmed.
Việt Nam has full legal and historical evidences to confirm that Hoàng Sa and Trường Sa, archipelagos, belong to Vietnam's sovereignty. We have exercised effective occupation at least from the 17th century when these two archipelagos did not belong to any country. We have continuously and peacefully exercised effective ownership. Thus, by effectively carrying out exploitation and management of the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos through the Huang Sa and Bắc Hải flotillas, the state of Vietnam has affirmed Vietnam's indisputable sovereignty over the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos. At least from the 17th century, the Huang Sa and Chiang Sa archipelagos have become a sacred part of the territory of the people of Vietnam. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn